everyone. Well, we got to talk about some brand new stuff regarding Nintendo Switch 2 because Nintendo's president, Shatura Furukawa, at the recent investors meeting actually talked about Nintendo's strategy when it comes to their next generation hardware, even though he's not going to give us like some glowing big details. I think it's good to know Nintendo's mentality heading into that next generation. We also have a report from a major outlet that is really only worth mentioning for two reasons. One, because it just makes the Nintendo Switch 2 seem more real because this is an extremely reputable outlet. And because, well, guess what? It actually does, I want to say confirms, but heavily hints that Nintendo did indeed move forward with a custom NVIDIA SOC, which is what we've all been suspecting most of this time. But again, Nothing confirmed. This is just finally not uh, like, you know, Nate the Hate or some random person on 4chan or whatever. This is coming from a very reputable place. So before we dive in, though, I want to remind you about today's sponsor. The Ugreen Revo Pro 210 is your one-stop solution for your USB-C expansion needs. As a content creator who often has to take his work on the go, it's important to me to be able to expand my laptop interfacing options so I can hook up multiple external monitors, ethernet, and even a slew of USB-C devices. It's even useful at home when I want to switch out from my Mac Studio to my Windows laptop for work purposes. With the RevoDoc Pro 210, you simply plug it into an available USB-C port on your Windows laptop and you get instant access to one USB-A 3.0 port, two USB-A 2.0 ports, an RJ45 jack available at 1000 megabytes per second speeds, a micro and standard SD card slot, and two HDMI ports that support up to two monitors at once, up to 4K 60 hertz or 8K 30 hertz. It also supports 85 watt pass-through charging, so if your laptop charges through USB-C, you can still use this dongle and charge your laptop at the same time. You can use this with Mac devices as well, and you know that I need to do that because USB expansion is desperately needed with my Mac Studio, which has a ton of USB-C ports. Please note, due to Mac operating system limitations, all extended monitors will display the same content. Ugreen sent us two other versions that do support external displays for Mac with expansion ports as well, so they have options for Mac users too. I really appreciate them sending these extra ones in as I'll be employing them on my Mac Studio today. If you want to get the Ugreen RevoDoc 210 today, you can do so for a whopping 29% off at the link in the description. We'll also include links to the other docs they have here that specifically support monitors for Mac. All right, without further ado, let's dive right into the latter half of what I talked about before we get to what Furukawa said, because this report comes from, I don't, how do you pronounce this? Is it Reuters? Reuters? I have no idea. Whatever the case might be, they put up this giant exclusive post about information they had regarding NVIDIA. See, NVIDIA pursues $30 billion in custom chip opportunity with a new unit. And the gist of this article is that NVIDIA is now getting into custom chip design. They're more so gearing it around AI, but they are now working with several different companies on fully custom chips, which is a big deal because the whole reason in the handheld PC space, we've seen it always be like AMD, 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 and not NVIDIA, is because AMD does do these custom chip designs, which NVIDIA has not been known for in the past. But towards the end of the article, actually right at the end, they talk about the Nintendo Switch 2. So it says Nintendo's current Switch handheld console already uses NVIDIA's Tegra X1 chip. A new version of the Switch console expected this year is likely to include an NVIDIA custom design, one source said. Now again, they're saying likely, probably because they only have one source on this. And for journalistic reasons, you normally want to have multiple sources. So when you only have the one source, yeah, you're not going to be like, oh, this is a for sure thing. It's just going to be more of a, hey, we believe in this source. But, you know, to hedge our bets, we're going to just say likely instead of guaranteed. Now, look, for a long time, we have thought that it was going to be based on something like the 
What is it, the NVIDIA T239? And I've seen some interesting chatter out there about the T239 and it being an older chip or something like that. I've also seen some debate out there where people said, well, that's not even a fully custom chip, which is completely weird because all of the information we got out of the NVIDIA hack from about two years ago showed that it actually was a fully custom chip the entire time. So I don't really understand where that comes from, but... In the end, look, we don't know what the chip is going to be in the Nintendo Switch 2. We don't know what the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be called. And what we really want to get to talking about eventually is the damn games, right? The games are why we play. So one thing that's going to be nice is once the system's actually announced, well, we'll still talk about specs and all of that. We finally will get to talk about the games. Because for right now, we just have a bunch of rumored third-party games and maybe 3D Mario and what? Nothing? So... We just have to wait for the damn thing to be revealed. Now, Nintendo's own president, Shatoru Furukawa, at the recent financial briefing, of course, was asked several questions about their next-gen hardware. And for the most part, he sort of, like, whisked it all the way and said, hey, we ain't talking about it, we ain't talking about it. But he did get into their ideology behind their next-gen platform based on the current platform, and I find it to be fascinating, so we're going to go check it out. And we have a segment of this clipped over at Nintendo Everything. Uh, great people over there. I know Brian, the person who runs the place. He's a good dude. Anyway, it says Nintendo on difference between Switch and past platforms and what the focus is for next gen. So we'll go right down to the quotes here. And this is what Furukawa had to say. The major difference between Nintendo Switch and past platforms is that we have an integrated handheld system and a home console system, which in the past were two separate platforms. That allowed software development resources to be concentrated on Nintendo Switch we have been able to release a continual stream of new titles, and one result is a longer life cycle compared to past platforms. Looking to the future, the most important thing for Nintendo is that we provide people with distinctively Nintendo entertainment that is fun and surprising in new ways. At the current time, we believe that our integrated hardware software dedicated video game platform business is the optimal way to continue to offer our unique entertainment and that policy will continue to guide our research and development initiatives going forward. Another difference from the past platforms is that we've been working with Denna to spread the use of Nintendo account since before the launch of Nintendo Switch. Nintendo accounts are an important touch point for maintaining long-term connections with our consumers. They can be used when consumers migrate to new hardware. Furthermore, they are also an important way for us to reconnect with people who have been taking a break from video games for a while and then, at some point, become interested in the unique entertainment that Nintendo has to offer. From that perspective, I believe that Nintendo accounts will continue to be important going forward. And yes, the source here is literally going directly to Nintendo.co.jp. So this is obviously really, really interesting and confirms a couple of things in my mind. One is that Nintendo is not going to go away from the hybrid format. For anyone hoping that maybe this faint hope Nintendo is going with a traditional home console or going with just handheld only, it seems like Nintendo recognizes that one of the reasons Switch was successful was all of their development teams making things for one platform. Also, by the way, during the Switch era, they consolidated all of their teams into the same building, and so they're no longer like separate handheld and separate home console. So should have already been obvious they weren't going to go away from the hybrid format, but this comes directly from the president, so it's worth paying attention to that he's basically like, hey, this is one of the key pillars of, to success of Switch. Probably going to carry that moving forward. Also, the Nintendo accounts. Well, he's not going to go out there and confirm the recent reports on backwards compatibility and all of that stuff. It is interesting he said Nintendo accounts will help users migrate to a new system. Well, let me ask you something. If you couldn't bring anything forward from Nintendo Switch. Let's say your NSO subscription doesn't move forward. Let's say your save files don't move forward. Let's say there's no digital library backup you know, ability. Let's just say none of that exists and that they're making you start over again with a Switch 2. How would a Nintendo account help that transition? If you can't bring anything forward, then what's it matter? The Nintendo account is literally just log in, here's the username, and like setting it up is super easy. You can set it up right on Switch. Make your little account thing, enter your email address, set up an account, pick your country. It's super simple. So here's the thing. If Nintendo accounts wasn't going to bring forward things from Switch, then that doesn't really make the transition any easier. So to me, while again, I'm just reading too much into this and this isn't a confirmation, 
it's almost a confirmation without confirming that there will be backwards compatibility and that NSO is going to move forward because, again, how else would Nintendo accounts really help with the transition if it's not bringing anything with it? If there's nothing coming with it, then there's nothing to transition. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I kind of think he's hinting at something without going into further detail. He's kind of expanding upon prior remarks about Nintendo accounts being forward compatible. That's something they said all the way back in 2021. And now he's saying, oh, it's going to help with the transition. Well, it can only help if you have stuff coming with it. If there's nothing coming with it, then there's no reason to really talk about it. So, I don't know, guys. Tell me what you think about this down in the comments below. Now, I know some of you guys are like, man, Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo Switch 2. Are we ever going to talk about anything else? <sighs> That's the goal. Our goal is to have a second video today going over some of these smaller news stories that are out there, but still might be fascinating to you. I know it's only going to probably reach, you know, four or 5,000 people, maybe less. I don't know. There's not a lot of, like, really big news going on, but we do have a number of smaller stories we can dabble in. One of them actually probably being the headline story having to do with Xbox and what it might mean for Nintendo's partner direct. But besides that, uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being here and I'll catch you in the next video.